Transportation systems are progressing. Now this includes road scanning and traffic control systems. And all of this is coming at the same time as the emergence of connected autonomous vehicles. So now think about this. The good news is that cities are really responding. And what's really exciting is we have this great opportunity to talk to the city of Chattanooga, which is looking to address the aging infrastructure. So here to chat with me all about it today is the Smart City Director for the city of Chattanooga. Now, Kevin Comstock's specialties include project management, strategic planning, and collaborative team building. So please join me in welcoming Kevin Comstock to the show. Kevin, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. So, Kevin, let's talk about it. You know, in Chattanooga, you guys have been a, doing a lot of amazing things. In your definition, what makes really a smart city or a city smart, I should say? Well, um, Peggy, to be honest, we, we have a lot of infrastructure that's in place. Um, we have a power board that's put in the gig fiber network. It was the first one in the country. And with that, we've, we've been using it to leverage uh, other types of technology here in the city. Uh, we've installed a, a traffic signal system that we can communicate with and, and monitor and maintain. Uh, and it helps us to make better, uh, more data-driven decisions in, in helping us uh, provide our services better to our citizens. So do you think that it's all about the data? Because we always talk about when we teach in the Internet of Things or we're teaching the construction industry, we say it's all about, it used to be location, location, location. Now we say it's about data, data, data. Is the key to a smart city really having access to really good information or the data to make those real-time decisions? Well, data, is, you know, kind of in our industry, we're saying right now that data is the new currency. Um, it is a it is a tangible item. Um, uh, universities are using it. Uh, agencies are using it, uh, and pretty much all of our decision making is based on that. Uh, citizens uh, require data for for some of their information about how they commute or how how their mobility works in the city. Uh, some of the services that they want provided. Our, uh, every bit of this is data driven. Uh, we use the, the data also in studying various things. So if we want to understand something more, uh, we have a local university here that we work with that does quite a bit of urban analytics on, on the data that we have and is always looking for new sources of data. So, yes. So let's talk about that. When we talk about having information now, but how do you get that information or, or how do you work with it when you're dealing with an aging infrastructure? Because we all know, we've even heard the president talk about that, but all of our cities are dealing with AD, an aging infrastructure. How do you make that work with all this new data that we talk about? A lot of what we do, like, you know, I mentioned our traffic signal system earlier. I mean, traffic signals have been around for quite a long time. Uh, the particulars of what we have here are, are basically five years old at the moment, at, the, at this point in time, but they still have valuable information that we can get from that. And there's still things that we can do with that system to help manage it and make it better. Um, there are other technologies that, uh, um, uh, you know, from CAD or GIS that are, that are helping with some of the um, uh, infrastructure decisions that, you know, we, we can study certain things, we can look at certain things, figure out what use cases are, uh, what the mobility needs are, and, and figure out, okay, how do we target which ones really need to be done first or in some sort of prioritization um, uh, scenario. It, there's just um, so many aspects to the data that, you know, it's, it, you're pretty much just open to whatever we can, you know, um, come up with. But that's an interesting point because right now if you're using the data to help you figure out what parts of that infrastructure need most the mo, in most important repair, are you actually using that right now? Because that's critical because we all know we all have that aging infrastructure and if we don't address it, it's going to be something happens critically to our water. It could be a, a huge disaster for a certain part of the city. Well, in you know, some of the data sources that kind of come from places like the uh, USGS, which uh, monitors uh, river height and, and whatnot. So if we know that there's uh, been you know several floods in the last few years, then we know that, that, that perhaps the structural integrity of a certain bridge may uh, may be lessened to some degree. 
uh, over time. If we know by our projections from land use and what development's going to occur, what kind of traffic is going to be out there and what the need of that bridge is going to be uh, projecting out 5, 10, 15 years into the future, then we can begin to make better decisions on how to, how to uh, plan for the replacement of that structure. Is that also going to play a role as you talk about your traffic signals? So if you have these infrastructures that are connected, you have the underground, we're talking about infrastructures that are connected. How are these all going to change when we start seeing things where autonomous vehicles come into play? Because that's all has to be connected in some ways, right? I mean, we can't have these connected cars without playing a role to our connected infrastructure, right? Well, you bring up a very important part that I think a lot of people kind of miss in this discussion is that in order to get to autonomous vehicles, we have to have connected vehicles first. Um, right now, um, you know, we have a couple of vent vendors out there that are, are support um, are indicating that they have a, 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 a an autonomous vehicle of sorts that is self-driving and can 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 manage the environment that it's placed in because of all the sensors on that vehicle uh, it does not communicate with other vehicles and it does not communicate with the infrastructure so most of the work that we're doing here in chattanooga is starting to develop those technologies and have those uh, types of uh, infrastructure in place um, there's been a lot of discussion about the uh, dedicated short-range um, radio communications between the infrastructure, traffic signals or whatever, and vehicles. Um, there's a lot of vehicle to vehicle type uh, of infrastructure that needs to be in place. So there's, we, we have to go through that step first. And so, you know, autonomous vehicles are, are, are in the future, but I think they're more distant future. So there's a lot more that has to be done when we talk about these smart cities, we talk about our autonomous vehicles, we talk about our infrastructure we have to build it before you know we can't just run all of these things have to be built together before we can really see it so where are we talking about five ten fifteen years down the road when we're looking at all this technology well i think uh, a lot you're going to start to see some really uh quantum leaps in technologies in the next five years um, um, the ability for uh, traffic signals to be able to communicate with some vehicles. Uh, we're seeing that now with a couple of manufacturers over in Europe uh, where the signal system can communicate how long it's going to be before the green light comes up or how much longer that or what speed they need to go through to, to, to miss the red. Um, so there's, those types of technologies are, are currently in place. We have the ability to do those things, but we just haven't deployed them on a, on a, on a bigger scale yet. I think as those things get tested in the near future, you're going to start seeing that stuff actively on the market in the next five years. Ten years, um, no telling. We're going to be able, be able to have the vehicles communicating with each other. And I think maybe in 25 years that, that we would be really begin to see a, a full embedding of autonomous type vehicles or fully integrated vehicles uh, within our network. Uh, that's including buses and, and transit vehicles, uh, under, a situational understanding where bicyclists and pedestrians are. Um, there's, there's a lot of things that we have to think about in that space. Well, it's really interesting that you're sharing all this with us, Kevin. I appreciate it. So Kevin Comstock, you're the Smart City Director for the City of Chattanooga. Thank you for spending time with us today. Anytime, Peggy. All right. Well, there you have it. That's someone you should know.